You're listening to the Flip Houses Like a Girl podcast, where we educate, empower, and celebrate everyday women who are facing their fears, juggling family and business, embracing their awesomeness, and wholeheartedly chasing their dream of flipping houses. Each episode delivers honest-to-goodness tools, tips, and strategies you can implement today to get closer to your first or next successful house flip. Here's your spiky-haired, breakfast taco-loving host, house flipping coach, Debbie DeBeery. Hey, how are you today? Thanks for taking some time out to hang out with us. I'm super excited about today's interview that I'm sharing with you because it's just fun and it's super valuable and it's important that you understand the things I tell you are possible are actually possible. So I like bringing guests on that are implementing the things I say are possible so that you can see. All right. And now this interview is with one of my students who I also have hired. She's also one of the coaches in my private coaching community. And on her first flip, she was able to provide a solution that really helped the homeowner out of a tough situation. And she was able to do that without having to go get outside financing. There's no bank loan involved. There's no hard money loan. None of that. It was a win-win all the way around. All right, let's get into this conversation. First, why don't you do a little introduction, like just a little spiel about who you are, where you live, tell us about your family, that, that sort of stuff. Um, okay, so I live in Huntsville, Alabama. I'm from Houston, Texas, actually South Houston, Texas. And we moved here about 12 years ago, and um, I have six daughters, six. (laughs) Under the age of? Um, 15 is the oldest, and then the baby is 16 months. She's our little surprise, surprise biscuit there. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we, we had three biological children, and then we wound up adopting our two foster daughters, and then about a month after the adoption was final, we got the surprise of a lifetime that awesome. I was pregnant in my 40s. <laughs> so um, awesome. that was a real life changer, but she's a blessing. And so um, life is always crazy. <laughs> well, I think that's even more important for people to know because you have six freaking kids under the age of 15. I have one 10 <laughs> year old and I'm like, Ah, and you still, like, you make the time. You make the time to do all of this, which is just awesome. Uh, well, I, I can tell you this. My second child rocked my world. And so those of you that are looking at me like I'm some kind of parent expert, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of help this time around. My first three were very challenging. And so this time, uh, you know, I have a lot of helpers. So don't think that I'm any... <laughs> superhero or something uh, with all these kids but um, but yes I had to I'm, I had to make a decision to do something for myself um, and that's what got me into this real estate investing journey so and you did you say that you're in Alabama yes I'm in northern Alabama so Huntsville metro area um, we're about 20 minutes well 15 minutes outside of Huntsville in the northern county area Awesome. And how did you find me? How did you find me? Um, you know, it's, it's a funny story. Um, so I was working with one of my best friends. She's a photographer, and I was doing some of her editing. And she came to me one day and said, um, you know, my husband wants to do this flipping stuff. And, um, you know, we're looking at this house. And uh, she said, would you go look at the house with me? And I was like, sure, I'll, I'll go take a look. And, um <laughs> I, I took a look around. She knew I had some experience in remodeling my house and um, just fixing things just around the house. So um, she had me look around this house, and I, I found a really big problem <laughs> that she hadn't known about. And um, the dryer vent, they had remodeled everything, and the dryer vent was um, sealed up oh, uh, with a sheetrock. 
Oh, God. And so as I'm kneeling down there, sticking my hand in the in the dryer vent on the exterior of the house, it just hit me like, I love this kind of stuff. That's awesome. I don't know this about you. You know, after she she and I had talked a little bit about, you know, the flipping idea, I started researching it really for her um, so she could kind of get some more, I guess, um, idea on what it's like to to flip and things like that. And um, I found several podcasts and videos made by by men in the industry. And I actually said to myself, you know, if I could find a female, because the the perspective of a of a woman in this business, it's um we face unique challenges. And so uh I started looking women, you know, women in real estate, women flipping, and you were the first one that came up, women flipping houses. I mean that was yeah. that was what came up and I started watching your podcast and listening, um, I'm sorry, listening to the podcast and watching your videos and following on Facebook. And then I just did it. Just That's did it. awesome. I love it. Um, okay. And then in terms of when you joined, were you scared? When you, were you scared when you pushed oh, yeah. to that? Yeah, sure. Click, oh, click yeah. now to join button. Yes. Um, so first of all, you know, all of the other programs that I looked at were so expensive. And I thought there is no way I can pitch this to my husband. <laughs> you know, we, I just now got him to agree to put the baby in, in a daycare and for me to, you know, work some more hours. Uh, there's just no way. Yeah. And I mean, I'm talking like tens of thousands yeah. of dollars, these programs. And, and then I found yours and I was like, this sounds too good to be true. You know, the, the, uh, price point was just for everything that you you offered it felt too good to be true I know I know I and, um, so I just really just uh, weighed all of the the reasons why I wanted to do this I focused on on the why nice. and I came to the conclusion that I needed to do this for me you know time is ticking away I'm already in my 40s, if I'm going to accomplish what I want to accomplish in life, um, I need to start. And I need to stop having babies. <laughs> oh, no, not really. Well, well yes, really. But <laughs> you can do this if yeah. you're a mom and you've got young children. Yeah. Um, it's possible to do this. Yeah, totally. All right. Let's jump into your first deal. Because One of the things, like, there are just so many things that I love about your first deal. Um, One being the way you found it, because it's something that I say, hey, go do this, and not everybody does this, right? And then um, how it it took a little while, right? It was a a roller coaster for sure. It was a yes, no, it's not going to happen. Yep, no. It was total on again, off again. So take us through how you found it and – what it was like how let's just talk about how you found it first okay so first I have to speak to your program um your the way you have things set out is so methodically purposefully planned out um even from releasing the modules one at a time to um, all the different steps it's like that for a reason, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Uh, you know, I'm I'm the kind of person that always kind of questions and bucks the system a little bit to make sure things, you know, oh, but I know better. I need to do it my way, like saying. So, um, you know, even when I did join, I was like, okay, she says do this, this, and this, but, you know, I'm not going to do it exactly like that. <laughs> but, but in the beginning, I'm attracting uh, bubbles. In the beginning, I did. And so one of the first things was to just put yourself out there on your personal social media, you know, after you've created your, your business and done all the steps that you tell us to do. Um, I just put it out there to my friends and family. I said, look, this is what I'm doing now. Y'all know I can't just sit still. I'm always going to be doing something. And this is what I'm doing. And um, a friend, an elderly friend, reached out to me through that because she saw that post. And she says, oh, do you, you know, do you buy houses? And um, she said, you know, I'm in a really difficult situation right now. And so I told her, you know, we can um, we can talk later. And so 
we did and we met and we, we talked and um, she told me kind of what was happening and I told her what was what was happening with me and we set up a meeting and um, I show up to the meeting and as I'm there uh, a gentleman's walking out of the house and she says oh he just bought it and I was like what <laughs> I didn't understand what was happening well come to find out she did not she felt so burdened by this house and she loved me so much as my friend through through our church that she didn't want to put the burden of the house onto me. Wow. Um, That's so, like, so, this is interesting to know. Like, this is, this is real. This is how some sellers feel. Yes. She, and she, and she even, we had a heart to heart. And I said, uh, you know, I, I wasn't upset that she didn't choose me. I was just concerned. I was like, why, you know, why don't you listen, you know, let us meet first. I could have helped you. And um, I was really concerned that he had had her sign something and didn't give her a copy of it. So she couldn't tell me what she signed. She just knows that he gave her a check and and he left. And so me not knowing the process, me not knowing really anything yet, um, I immediately thought worst case scenario, thought of the typical stereotypical a uh, house flipper, or not house flipper, but um, what's it called, like a wholesaler or something, doing something like sharky, you know, and that was what I, I was like, this doesn't sound right, this sounds shady, you know, I felt really bad for her. Anyway, um, you know, she said, I, I just didn't want to burden you with this house. That was the end of it. So, you know, that was that. I said, okay, it's okay. I understand, you know, um, let me know if I can help you any way. If you have questions, maybe I can help you find the answer. Um, I offered to get her an elder advocate if she needed that and wanted to make sure that the contract she signed was on the up and up. And um, and that was that. And we left it at that. And I went along with my modules and learned the program and started implementing all the steps. I put several bids on, on different houses and got turned down and so I'm proceeding with my business as as normal, and um, then she contacts me in I guess March, um, and said, "Look, you know, I don't know what's happening. the The guy can't close for whatever reason. This was right around the COVID stuff, right before everything started kind of mm-hmm. coming down. So this was this year. So um, she reached out to me basically." In the same situation she was in, but worse this time, because now she has no seller for her, I mean, no buyer for her house. She has already moved out and was um, living somewhere else and could not afford both, both uh, where she was living and, and the house she left. Sure. And so um, anyway, that's, that's how I found it. And that's how from there it's, it's kind of history after that. Um, we worked it out and we structured the deal in a very unique way uh, so that she could get what she needs and what she needed. And, and then, you know, I could still make it work. Yeah. Let's talk about that because it's a way that people don't believe is possible. Right. Um, and, and I want to note that uh, when I do talk about this, people always say, well, how do I find those kinds of houses? It's not that you're finding a kind of house. It's, a solution you can offer a seller if it makes sense to both parties, right? So it's not right. a kind of house. It's a solution that we can offer. Okay, let's talk about it. How did you start Exactly. It? And, and let me do a side note. In one of your podcasts, um, one of the, the reasons why I chose to pursue this program was your heart and your reasoning and your reasoning behind what you do. And, and my reasoning and heart lined up with that, leaving yeah. people in places better um, than the way you found them. And so um, it was not about money for me. It was not about the house, really. I mean, it was really about helping my friend. Yeah. She genuinely needed help, and I genuinely had the tools that could help her in some way. That's amazing. Um, and I didn't know really how it was going to help her because yeah. I still needed some more facts to, to really analyze. Yeah. Um, but I knew I was going to help her in some way. Yeah. You led with how can I help her? Right. Always 
Yeah, which always allows us to come up with solutions, right? Because if we're not, we're all we're in the all, we're this already listening of they just want the most money possible. That's it. Every seller just wants the most money possible, and that's not the case. And it's not what's best for them in every case. Like there are different scenarios, and people just need somebody to listen. Really, as we continue along, I think connection and listening. Um, are just going to become more and more important. At least that's what I hope. <laughs> I yeah. hope. Like, even with all these I buyers, right? It's like there's it, that's just transactional. We are still humans trying to have human experiences, right? So right. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about it because it's so, it really awesome. So what I really wanted to do is have a clear picture of what she wanted. I said if you could wave a magic wand and whatever you want could happen, what would that be? And, and she told me in detail what she wanted, why she wanted it. This was yeah. her family home. She grew up in this home. Um, you know, there were some other personal things that she shared. And I wanted to get that clear picture of what she wanted and why. Yeah, I love that question. And then from there, I went to work and said, okay, how can I make all these things happen for her? And and me not lose money in the process. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, that was really the it right yeah. there. Yeah. And so, um, you know, she she was uh, it, time was of the essence of this transaction because she was already living in where she was going to live and needed this house done like a month ago. Got it. Uh, as far as, you know, sold or whatever she was going to do. So because of the time situation and because of uh, some other personal factors, um the option of a subject to came, you know, became an option. And I explained it to her. A subject to, it's where you buy the property subject to the existing mortgage. So the mortgage stays in the property seller's name. Um, and then you just assume the mortgage. And there's a lot of rules and caveats in there. Um, so it's, it's a little more detailed than, than, I'm making it very simple right here just for the sake of this um, this call. But that is how we structured it as a subject, too. So she kept her original mortgage, and I just paid it. I paid the monthly payments during the rehab. Awesome. And so that um, that helped her because we could close quicker. I didn't have to, you know, get a hard money loan or a private money loan or any kind of loan because it was already there. The loan was there. All I had to do was um, secure the funds for the rehab. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I love it. And, okay, now let's talk about the rehab. <laughs> <laughs> okay, remember that little part where I said as long, you know, I'm going to help her as much as I can right. without be losing money? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm a learn by uh, what, what's it called? Where you like hands on? on. I learn uh-huh. hands on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You couldn't have taught me this. No one could have taught me oh. what I learned through this experience without going it. through it. Yeah, that's the beauty of flipping houses. We and of course, them. hindsight's twenty twenty. If I could wave a magic wand and go back, you know, would I make any changes? Really? No, I right. wouldn't. Right. Even though. We hit some roadblocks, and we had to make some changes and pivots. Um, I would do it exactly the same way because I have learned so much by yeah. that experience. Yeah. Um, and that experience being that um, initially the rehab costs that I used in my deal analyzer um, were probably significant, considered significant costs compared to most flips. Um, and once we got in there and started doing the work, we found out it needed a lot more work, Mm -hmm. like to the tune of 25,000 more. Um, (laughs) So our rehab budget was originally 60,000 and it, we basically rebuilt the house. Yeah. It's awesome, by the way. But, but I can say that, um, I, I made a plan A, a plan B and a plan C. Always. And. Uh, made that very clear to my investors, and um, you know we were able to pivot pretty seamlessly. Yeah. 
every time something else came up. You know, of course, you know, um, some of my contractors were like, oh, gosh, you know, we've got this and what's going to happen. And, you know, is this going to kill the project? And I was constantly like, I got this, guys. It's cool. Yeah. You know, I have a plan B. I have a plan B for plan B. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Always have multiple <laughs> strategies, right? Multiple plans, backup plans, backup plans to the backup plans. Yes. Yeah. And And even when you don't have a backup plan. I think it's really important to know in this business, there is no problem that cannot be solved. Totally. No problem. Any problem that can happen, there is a solution. Mm -hmm. Would the result sometimes uh, result in not as much profit or, Mm -hmm. you know, possibly a loss? Possibly. But um, even when things like that happen, it's such a good learning experience because you'll know that for the next time. Right, right. Yeah, um, I hope I I didn't skip one of your questions that you had asked. I'm looking kind of at my my numbers here. Um, yeah, so the repair budget was <clears throat> significantly higher. And mind you, um, I had started out planning to get a. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, planning to get a private money loan for the rehab. So, you know, we did the deal subject to, and then I had a little bit of cash that I used for, like, the closing and the down payment. Um, But ultimately, um, you know, I was going to get a private money loan for the entire rehab because in the beginning, and when I pitched this idea to my husband, uh, risk to our family was a big concern, financial risk. And um, that was constantly on my mind, you know, yes, I can help her. I can do this. I can do that. But ultimately, I can't risk our personal finances. That was like something floating in the back of my mind constantly. Yeah. So um, in doing that, um, you know, the original plan was to get a private money loan for all of the rehab. But when we had to pivot, I had to pivot some other um, mindset things, too. You know, pivot the risk, pivot um just how I was going to fund it. Um, I had, with my uh, alternate plan, I still had the option to get another private money lender. Um, This was, remember, this was right in the middle of COVID Mm -hmm. when it was beginning, March, April. We closed May 13th. So May 13th, 2020. Right. What was going on with the economy? (laughs) We had no idea what was happening. Right. It was so much uncertainty. risk yeah. was the term risk became a completely different term right. in May 2020. Right. Um, and so so we made some changes to that. And um, I wound up utilizing some of the options that were provided because of COVID through the uh, TSP loans and things like that from uh, our personal 401k. Um, and some other, you know, there's some other personal things that you can utilize that don't necessarily put you at risk. Um, so like you don't have to have a bunch of money to start out, um, in this business, but there are personal ways that you can fund your, your flips without actually getting into your bank account. Um, but some of the, I wrote down some of the things that some people may use if they're going the personal route, is personal investment options, savings, um, stocks, bonds, things that might could be cashed out, HELOCs on your uh, personal residence or other investment properties, credit cards. Um, Those are just some of the options that you can utilize when you're in a situation where you don't want to get a a private money loan. The other reason was um, because of the pivot and because of the $25,000 additional expense, we – we had to weigh that because if we use private money, we have to pay a, a an interest, you know, to that that yeah. lender. Yeah. So um, by pivoting and using some of my personal uh, options, we saved. Let's see. Well, now I don't see it on here, <laughs> but it was it was a significant um, significant savings. Here we go. Um, it was over seven thousand dollars in uh, interest that I saved by using my own money that was just sitting there, sitting there. and 
in the stock market and things like that. So, um, did I answer your question? Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked looking at my notes. Oh, no, we're good. We're good. So, okay. So, we talked about some renovation surprises that happened. <laughs> well, renovation budget surprises, at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in terms of the contractor, did you hire a contractor or did you manage it yourself or how did you work that? So um, I had planned to be my own um, GC to save money that this was part of the original plan. You know, a GC, a general contractor, they usually charge a percentage of the whole project. And in turn, they manage the project for you. They hire the subs. They handle, you know, costs and materials and all of that. And they give you the reports. Um, but in this deal, there was just not enough room to pay for a general contractor. So um, I chose to be my own project manager. Well, in my county, um, the permit department has a rule that if you are going to act as your own general contractor on a property you own, you have to sign that you will not sell it for a year. And so that kind of threw it for a loop because I'm here to flip houses and <laughs> and I was planning to offload this baby by the summer. <laughs> and, you know, all of a sudden I'm already in the deal. I'm already, I mean, the train is already moving. Yeah. And, and then I realized this. Um, it, had I done better homework, and stuck to the modules that you provide us with, <laughs> telling us, you know, it, the order to do things in, I probably would have figured this out sooner. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> but, um, but yeah, so the permit process in the county uh, meant that I couldn't sell for a year. Yeah. And, and so that also contributed to our pivot. It kind of all happened at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, it affected the budget a little bit because the permits, things that I thought my key contractor could do, now he couldn't do because of the permit re- requirement. Right. Um, I didn't do the proper, proper uh, research beforehand to find out what kind of work is permit, you know, requires permit and licensed contractor and what doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so because of that, I had to pivot again and there was more expense. Yeah. You know, the budget was, went up more because then I had to hire a licensed uh, person for certain things that I hadn't planned on, on hiring a licensed because I thought my key contractor could do it and sign off on the permit. <clears throat> so, so that just kept, I mean, my rehab budget just kept backing up against the wall but again because I had the multiple plan a plan b plan c you know and um I I was able to to solve the problems and and we were able to uh, we decided we were going to rent it um well we didn't decide we were kind of forced to (laughs) since I couldn't sell it for a year um we decided to make it into a rental so that I could get some of these funds back and really so I could Um, be compensated for my time, really. I mean, I don't want to really call it a profit because, you know, I, I, I put a lot of time into it and, and I mean, I deserved a profit. (laughs) It's a business. It's a business. (laughs) Um, that was really hard. On a side note, that was really hard for me to say and do because all I wanted to do was help people. Um, and to say I deserve a profit for that, yeah. it's still even hard to say. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, but you don't, you can't do this if you're not making a profit. You can't right. help people. I know. I have to yes. say, I keep coming back to it. I know. So um, we were we were able to pivot on that project, and we finished it in record time. I mean, this was a full gut. Yeah. Every single system was replaced on this house. Yeah, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, all the sheetrock, ceiling, insulation. It is a new house. Yeah, it's a it's a new house, and it's, it's a new house. And yeah. I I should share uh, the before yeah. and after pictures yeah. in the group. Yeah, yeah. But um, in the end, um, she got rented out, um, and for a above market rent rate. I had a lot of naysayers. I know, and I want to talk about that. Okay. You know, 
I mean, I'm, I get price shamed all the time, even though this program is one twentieth of what it is elsewhere, right? But I'm price shamed all the time, even and on listings and on leases and I, all of that. The price shaming has nothing to do with you, and it's hard because we take it on because we care what people think about us. It has nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with the property. It had everything to do with the people who couldn't afford that rental rate period yes but it's yes. hard. that's a hard like that is a like a daily reminder to myself it's hard right it's we're very not hard please everyone we're not freaking nutella but you know i i put so much time and heart and energy into this project much. that i was firm in my mindset that i am not accepting a penny less than this i'll sit on it and not rent it before yeah. I accept yeah. less. And I had realtors private message me and say, you're ridiculous for asking this amount for that area and this and that. Um, I had call after call after call of people who drove by. I put a little sign by the main road that said house for rent. And they called, asked for information. And when I told them, they were like, you're crazy. You ain't going to get that for that. Even people in the that are in the neighborhood said, you know, and there was some public posts that were oh, totally shaming. And yeah, it made me like, Oh, know. you know, feel bad. But uh, my best friend, she said, you know what? They're just je- not jealous, but they're, they're shaming you because they can't afford it. Right. It's not about, <laughs> they you. can't, you know, and so I held out and I, I did, I will say I did lower the price from the first price that I put out there for the monthly rent. Mm -hmm. Um, But there was a reason for doing that. I was originally going to include all of the furniture and everything, the staging, you know, um, to allow it to be rented furnished. Um, And there were some other things. So really, you know, although I did drop the price, um, the person, you know, the, the tenant, um, the tenants, who applied for the house um, never knew the difference. I mean, they didn't know that I had planned to do, you know, sure. include all this stuff. Right. Um, so it still was within the budget, and it still rented for above market. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, did you want? Did you want to add something else? Well, I just wanted to kind of sum up the. Yep. The structuring aspect, um, so the plan, the final pivot plan was to rent it and then to do a cash out refinance so that I could pull my money out, back out, and, um, you know, the rehab money that I put in personally, whereas if I'd have gotten a private money loan, it would have been to pay the private money lender off. Um, And so that's where we're at right now. We're in the process of finishing up that cash out refinance. Once I get that um, that cash out, then I will pay off the primary mortgage, the subject to mortgage, and um, myself and uh, another private investor that contributed as well. Awesome. Awesome. And you have since, like, while you were in the middle of that, actually, you bought another project. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds crazy. I love it. Yes, I did. And there was this house that had gone on the market, and I knew I wanted it immediately. I saw it. It was on the MLS. I messaged my realtor, and um, I didn't know this at the time, but she was uh, – someone in her family had passed away, and she was at the funeral all day. And I was like, why isn't she responding? I want to put a bit on this house. Just you – know? <laughs> and so I felt really bad later. But oh, um, And then the, at, by the end of that day, it had listed pending. And so I was like, man, we missed out on that. And I apologize for <laughs> texting her incessantly. <laughs> um, and so then we um, we let it go. I mean, obviously, it was it was already pending. I didn't let it go in my mind. I kept thinking, man, that house, that house, that house, that house. And then one morning I roll over and look at my phone, and guess what's back on the market? And so before 7 a.m., I had her on the phone. Oh my God. <laughs> call it. Call. We want it. 
we're going to put an, an offer, you know, asking price above asking price. And so we did, and I, I purchased it, and um, we're starting on it hopefully next week. Yeah. So what's your plan with that real quick? So that one, um, it's on a large, kind of a, a larger lot, and it's a very old house, 1950s, so it does need some work. And um, my plan is to refinish it or rehab it and rent it. And the other side of the land that's clear, we're going to build a duplex on it. That's awesome. And so um, it's really two projects in one. And uh, the best, best news, I don't know if I should share this publicly. (laughs) Okay, let's retract. (laughs) Uh, Let's just say I already have a renter for the house once it's done. And it's a a really awesome situation. Another situation where I'm able to help somebody. um, I wish I could say it. Um, but it's another great win-win situation. It really yeah. is. And I'm yeah. very happy of how it worked out and we're very excited. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I think we touched on everything. We even touched on like some mindset stuff and limiting beliefs, which, you know, I love talking about because that's, that's Anywhere and everywhere, right? We have those anywhere and everywhere, but people don't talk about them as much. And can I say something else about that? Yeah. Um, so I started this program thinking that I was going to flip houses, and that was my goal, flip, you know, flip stress, flip houses. And when I had to pivot with that project, um, even though it worked out and, and now it's a cash-flowing asset and everything, I still kind of felt a little bit like I failed because I didn't flip it. I yeah. didn't, you know, flip it for the profit like, um, you know, the program is designed for. And thankfully, because of our tight-knit group <laughs> in our private group uh, within the coaching program, um, one of my fellow <laughs> – Flipping Sisters, as we call them, um, pointed out that I didn't fail. You know, why are you saying you failed? You didn't fail. Renting and having a cash flowing uh, asset is not failing. (laughs) And uh, I had been sitting on that for several months, and I think it was messing up my mindset on why I didn't start on this next project, Mm -hmm. because um, I was thinking I I had failed from my goal. Yeah, I know, man, I love talking about this with you because it's just like you had, for so many reasons, it wasn't a failure, for so many reasons. And I know that it feels that way when that was the intentional, like the intended goal was fix, flip, profit, move on. Right. The fact that you had alternative exit strategies, 99% of beginners, first time flippers do not have that. Okay, so the fact that you even had alternative exit strategies mapped out in your mind Mm -hmm. and then we're smart enough to recognize, oh, crap, I got to pivot and I'm going to pivot fast and let's choose this one. Right. And oh, well, if this isn't a great choice, okay, we've got another choice, but you've got to pivot and and choose. Right. And just, yeah, all choices. You can make another choice if you have to. But I love it. Like, it's so it's so obvious to us it, when you talked about that on that one um, mindset call, our book book club book call, club, yeah, mindset, mind your business, right? Yeah. Um, when we talked about that, we all of us were like, it is so obvious that you won on so many levels. And then also we realized, like, we get why you thought you failed. Like, we understand that because we're humans and we would feel the same way. But as an outsider. It was choreographed beautifully. Well, and I will say this, you know, um, yes, your program teaches how to flip houses, okay? But really, I feel like you should redo all your marketing because that's not the primary thing that you do. Um, The primary thing that you do and, and that we do in the group and in the coaching program is empower us as women in this industry to 
identify what you want. Yes. Feel like you deserve what you want. Yep. You, you know, find the tools to get, you know, get there. And it's okay to reward yourself yes. and pat yourself on the back when you've done a good job. And just all the mindset work, really. Um, I never would have done this kind of mindset stuff on my own. Um, but having an accountability group, um, that has been a huge asset to me. Yeah. Um, the flipping education is just kind of a plus. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and I think everybody in the group feels the same way. Yeah. At least the people who are actually doing the thing. Yeah. Um, right. I think some people who maybe aren't doing, actually doing the work and doing the thing, the scary thing, which is yep. the flipping of the houses. Um, I think that sometimes they may say, oh, this, you know, I don't know, you know, they may not feel it as much. And that's because they're not doing it. Exactly. Well, and that's one of the reasons why I think uh, most real estate investing courses are are, um, they set people up to fail because what they do is they're like, okay, here's the content, you know, for six to eight weeks. And then you're on your own to implement the hardest freaking part. You're on your own to do, which is why we stick around for 12 freaking months while you <laughs> while you go implement. And what you're going to do is like it's it is your process, your right. race, your pace, your process. Yes. And everyone is on a different journey. Some of us have a lot more mud in here that we have to like dredge through. Right. We have to like get through that mud. Yeah. Others have done mm-hmm. some work or do, or have been around different messaging. The messaging we've been around all our lives completely impacts and drives how we think, what we believe is possible, what we believe is possible for us, even though it's possible for other people, might not be possible for us. I'm not worried. Right? right? So all of that crap, like, we have to talk about that stuff. And if this is... It's basically a mindset program, and I happen to teach you about flipping houses. But exactly. If I lead with that. Yes. Be like, Psh, I don't need mindset. I got this. I don't need yes. mindset. We all do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Every day, it's ongoing, and yeah. um, you know, I've been in this program what nine months. Yep. Nine months, and house flipping aside, I feel like I have grown so much as a person and, and as a woman, yeah. I guess I could say, you know, and it's affected all areas of my life. Um, really, it really has. And that just from doing the mindset work and get allowing myself to feel things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm I'm such a natural born leader. I'm the oldest of, of five and um I'm always seemingly in a leadership type position and I've always approached that leadership as okay, you're in charge, so you've got to be tough, you've got to be fearless, you've got to put on this huge armor so you you know, you can lead fiercely through the through the war. <laughs> And um, I'm realizing that's actually not the best way to do it. Um, and so I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> well, I think it's 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 just maybe it's more of like how you've grown and more awareness that you have of yourself now. Like perfection is not it's not the goal, right? It, yes. it stops being the goal. Yes. Um, like authenticity and transparency become the new goals. Like, let's show up and let's be who we are. Right. And let's flip some houses. Right? And have fun. Yeah, and have fun and be total dorks. Uh, you know, I, vulnerability, that's one of the key things that I'm, I'm working on right now yeah. is just be yourself. Like yeah. you put it with that picture. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm using that. <laughs> and you're like, okay. And I'm like, no. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, but I'm there. It's okay because people are going to like me or they're going to not like me. Right. And it's not that I don't care. I do care, but it's not going to define who I am if they like me or don't like me. Yeah. I know. Um, That's a tough so one, man. I'm just going to be myself and have fun and 
you know, be supportive. I'm going to try and be, you know, what I feel like I need, you know, yeah. in somebody else. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. I think that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you for, like, just thank you for sharing what you've gotten out of the program because it makes me teary. I will, I probably will get teary because, you know, I get to know about this because that's what I was hoping to create. I was hoping to create three years ago when I threw this party, <laughs> right? I threw this internet party saying, hey, I teach women how to flip houses, but I do it in a different way and I'm a little bit woo woo um, and I'm not so profit driven, right? Was I, who knew? I had no idea if anybody was going to come to my party, but I wanted it to be a different party than anyone else was creating. Right. And we're totally freaking doing that because of the women that, it, that this program attracts. Mm -hmm. And it's a, like, we're very protective of the bubble. Like if people come in and they want to be toxic, they're not going to, they're not going to hang. Like it's not, that's not that kind of party at all. Um, so I'm just grateful that women are trusting like this random weirdo on the internet. Like, okay, <laughs> let's go flip houses with Debbie. Let's see what she's like. Um, but really like they're trusting me enough to say, yeah, okay, let's do this. And then they get inside the community and it's just making the community even better. Like, it's yeah. just amazing. It's this beautiful snowball effect. Um, so think it means a lot when, when you guys share that it's more than just flipping houses, because that has always been my goal, that it's more than just flipping houses. It's who we are in the world, how we show up to others, how we show up for ourselves, like all that stuff. So thank you. Well, and your authenticity and vulnerability and willingness to share even, you know, your mistakes and, and the things that you've been through, um, I'm learning from that. And, and I hope to do the same thing, you know, for other people in the group. Say, hey, look, I'm not perfect. I don't know. I've only been in this thing for nine months. <laughs> but I've gotten really good at finding the resources yep. to solve the problems. And so um, I appreciate your vulnerability because it's teaching me to set that armor down a little bit and to let people in and to see, Hey, look, I make mistakes. I mean, I've, I've got my background all pretty over here, but look, at, look at my face. <laughs> see, I, I ain't even shameful. Like, I love it. I'm, I'm over sharing. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. So. I literally had to move the vacuum cleaner out. <laughs> Anyway, sorry to sidetrack. Oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, this group, it's, it's amazing. And I really, really appreciate everything that, that you've done and the other members in the group. It's what keeps me going. You're awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Um, I will say this, too. You know, the other ladies in our private group, it's so inspiring to just hear their stories and and how you know yes they were scared at first and then um they took that that fear and just kept on going yeah. and um something that one of the other ladies helped me to realize is that the fear is not a weakness the fear is something we all feel um it's seeing the fear and doing the scary thing anyway um, that shows the true bravery. And I'm seeing that so much in our private group. And it's like fuel to my tank of, okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, hearing people and being empowered by other people who are doing that scary thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen, sister. You're a rock star, Christina. I'm so glad we crossed paths. All right, Christina, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you later. See you later. <laughs> All right. If you're sick of being on the sideline and not taking action because you're scared and you don't want to do this alone, you don't have to. All right. Get on my wait list because the women inside my program, first of all, the community is unbeatable. The place is awesome, all right? I guarantee you, you've never experienced anything like it. Secondly, we are closing on deals left and right. We have so many first flips happening right now. Yes, in the middle of a pandemic, right now. And they're smart flips, and they're doing good in their communities. 
If you want to be part of something really incredible, we would love to have you. If you resonate with my message, if you resonate with my vibe, I know that you're going to love the other women inside the community. All right, go to firstflipdoneright.com, get on the wait list, and you'll have first dibs on the next opening. Because I give so much personal attention to people inside my community, I don't let a ton of people join at once. So it's on a rolling, ongoing basis, all right? So put your name on that list. You will be notified within a week or two of your chance to join. All right, firstflipdoneright.com. Until next time, go out there, flip houses like a girl, leave people and places better than you find them, and make it a great day. Bye, y'all.